guys right yeah. and then you know you're like on 20 records or 10 records i have at home or something so and like I, I, I spo- yeah, yeah yeah and it's so funny like so i'm quite happy to that you took the time I, of I spoke, course it's an honor no nah, well i spoke this week like uh, with Ariel anderson as well so i'm really curious no. yeah yes 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 he was in in norway of course yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's also like, he's one generation, I think, before you. But like, you know, it's, it's so funny because he has kind of the same path as you. Like you played with so many American musicians all the time and Europeans. Yes, so. I know. And, and I, I start to listen to him when I started to play. So he, he's my hero. So that's yeah, great. such a cool guy. So, But yeah. uh, uh, anyway, I first want to start. I saw this video footage with you and Gregory Priva. Uh, a yes. duo that you guys played, I think, in August this year, and uh, yes. I think, and I think then your wife joined joined you. So, and yes. I wanted to ask you, how did you meet Gregory? Uh, because you you really have a good uh, connection. Yes, I, I met uh, Gregory actually through my manager Ren Hess. Ah. He sometimes he suggests musicians for me because why uh, well, I, I I don't know about about him I haven't hadn't heard him at all so so I, I went in actually to the internet and, and listened to him and I, oh, wow, wow. He's, yeah and then I invited him up to Copenhagen so we we jammed and re, we just we just played yeah. for two days I think wow. and, and it became really like this and also he, he's fantastic to to play my my songs, I would say, because since I'm a, a bass player and I want normally my songs is written for piano. Yeah, I play m- most of them. Sometimes you, com- you so. compose on piano also. I compose, right? I compose yeah. on, on yeah. piano, so it takes. I mean, it, it's very important to for the piano player to to understand. What yeah. what I mean with the music and and Gregory is just the perfect yeah. for that. I mean he and he put some extra in in the songs to so make them more yeah. than they are. Yes, yeah, so that yeah. No, it's, it's it's he's so lyrical, but he can play of course anything. Like he's really good with art meters and everything. Like but yeah, yes. like a re- yes. real virtuoso. But I, I wanted to ask you. It's like interesting that you mentioned this. Like you said that he's really capable of playing your songs and that's how i also hear your music they're really melodical it's all about the melody in a sense i hear and it's actually like songs you know it's of course it's jazz and improvised but it's like a story yeah. like a, i don't know how to describe it like how do you see i wanted to ask you like how do you start the composition first of all how do you compose like do you start with a melody or with a Harmony or uh, th- th- that's two different questions. The first question is is uh, I, I I see it as songs because my background is that I come from a cl- classical music and yeah. uh, and pop music and rock music. So so that was before I started to listen to jazz actually, and so. so I, I try to make the compositions. Uh, I think I think them as a song, oh. uh, and um, I want them to be able to be, what you say, singable. Yeah. But uh, sometimes when it's instrumental music, it's of course different because it's it's more notes often yeah. than if, if you write a vocal vocal tune. And when I compose, normally I sit at the piano. Just improvise. Ah, okay. Just, oh. just play, yeah. And sometimes I have an idea to... That's quite nice, actually, if, if I have 
just I decide myself to have an idea of something and 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 work with that because then you are limited it's always yeah. better to be limited than yeah. just to do whatever yeah so those two are the things i do Funny. and some and also um, when i write for a song for, uh, at the bass then it's different but so most it's either on the piano or on the guitar i write sometimes on the guitar oh really oh wow that's so cool yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, Aril uh, said the same thing, like that he would just start with some melodies on piano or on his keyboard and then develop from them because I think uh, the entire Scandinavian kind of influence is like this melody vibe, which I love, you know, because it's so soothing and you can sing everything like you said, and I, I really like that. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think, yeah. No, just, just go ahead first. Yeah. Uh, because also, I when I was young, I started uh, to learn music about my teacher in the church. He was an organ player, so I was there every Sunday watching him playing uh, hymns and Bach. Oh yeah. So that's how I I learned also the the voice things that that it, all music should be. Uh, done by that so it's, yeah. just, it's a nice voicings because then it, it, it sounds better so i have studied that a lot yeah no but it also makes sense because if you look at the you know the jazz standards from the 40s or 50s it's all about the melody like then jazz kind of went into this strange direction of which i also like in a way but then it became boring like just odd meters and 11 over 7 and all these augmented strange harmonies and I think it's kind of a lost touch with its primal idea, the, which is... It's, for me, I, I like that a lot, actually. I'm very interested in that. Yeah. No, we Although, do, yeah. So, when I hear other people doing that, uh, I, th I think the next step would be to, to really combine that uh, um, odd meter things with... Uh, songs and melodies and to get that in, in, in into yeah then it can become really really hip i think in the future so i think there's something going on there <laughs> yeah it's like sting you know uh, yeah when yeah. he has like you know those best hits like are sometimes in seven or five and you don't even notice that it's in seven it's like, yes. oh, okay. i agree yeah, yeah. But that's just the thing you should not think of yeah should, it, it, if it sounds natural, but then it doesn't matter what, if, yeah. what meter it is. Definitely. But uh, uh, speaking of composition, like, do, do you compose for players? Like, or, I mean, do you envision like a project that you're going to do like okay, your quartet or duo with Paolo? Or do you just write down like uh, sit down every day on piano and write a snippet of melody and then or... I, I do both. When I okay. when I have a project, for example, when I had a project with Paolo, mm -hmm. I was thinking we are playing. That was composed especially for yeah. for bass and trumpet. So that, then then I do that. And normally there there is uh, I have when I write I I have a, maybe a recording or I have something to write for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So 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 then I think of the musicians that are going to play it yeah. but not always but but like it i have recorded one tune on libera me for example it, mm -hmm. it's a solo bass it's called the teacher mm -hmm. it's a duet with john christensen yeah that was actually written for my teacher Anders your bass player oh, yeah, so yeah. i had a recording with him playing that actually oh really yeah fantastic version Oh, I have to check it out. Okay. It, it was uh, it's it's not released because ah, uh, it's okay. a radio program, but okay, yeah. But I can send it to you. It was oh, it's very please. beautiful. Yeah, yeah I love Anders. Yeah, he's such a yeah. great yes. player. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's just an example how, um, and some of the songs uh, there are, if there are uh, a lot of guitar arpeggios, so, so then I have written it on on guitar. So because yeah. Makes I started sense. to play guitar, so yeah. Yeah, but uh, I wanted to, to go back just with, since like Gregory is also in the latest Liberetto Quartet yeah. project. Uh, I wanted first to ask you, uh, 
first of all, how I mean, first of all uh, about this quartet, how did you meet John Paricelli? Because he's for me one of my favorite guitarists and so underrated. Like you know, mostly musicians know him not. But like, how did you decide for him, and what's the story with him? Uh, really I met him in, in in Poland. We did a project uh, with a film composer, Spigner Preisner, in Poland. So we we were there recording, and I, I I met him there, and I just found him so unbelievable. Yeah, because he plays uh, both acoustic, electric, and he can all he can. He read very well and he is very rhythmical and he, yeah. he, I mean, he has everything for me in, in my band. So I, I, I agree. He's just a fantastic player and a great sound. Yeah. 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 And then the, he's a fantastic person it, and it, it helps also. Yeah. Especially yeah, when you're playing concerts on tour, then yeah, it's important to. I must say he's very important for our, for our group, though he, um, because his sound is very special to mm. make it sounds like us, like the Liberetto group. Yeah. 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 And also, uh, and Magnus uh, Öström, he's also from the beginning of the Liberetto group in it, kind of, right? And uh, how did yeah. you guys meet? Like, uh, when's the story with you? Uh, we, we, he started with me, I mean, because this tragic death of yeah. Espiar happened. And, uh, I think it was half a year after that we had a concert in uh, in Poland, and and then I didn't have any drummer. So actually, I, I called Magnus to ask him if he could join because I know it was difficult for him to just mm. start to play with something else. But I really wanted to play with him, so I asked him, and he, and he said yes. So and since then he was in the band, and I'm really happy about that. Yeah, it's like you, you three are the core kind of, and then you change. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But uh, I, I want to ask you about the first uh, Liberetto and the second, actually, with Tigran. You know, he's became like now this huge uh, name in, in in jazz. Like, I mean, he's an amazing composer and player. Yeah. And you kind of discovered him when he was not so known yet, right? Or was he already then? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I didn't discover it. it was the same there. I, I, somebody, uh, I think it was uh, also Rene, my manager, who ah, okay. told me, have you heard this guy? No. I have to. <laughs> so I, I listened and, and um, then I invited him for a concert and he invited me to play on one of his concerts oh, oh. in France. So, so that's how we started. And then oh. we made this album and he, he made also one composition, or a couple of comp compositions on, on both yeah. Yeah. albums. And of, of course, he's, he's a fantastic player. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. It, it was really, really great. Yeah. It's, and, it's... Uh, I just heard his new album yesterday, a little bit of that. And he, yeah, it's, it's really amazing. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. yeah. But, but I wanted to ask you about the concept of the, uh, Liberetto, I mean, I've read about it, but uh, it's basically what we spoke already, right? This idea of songs, in a way. So that's kind of hidden in the title, or...? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, it, it came from uh, Libera Me, the album I did. Yeah. So it's, it's about uh, to be, be, be free. So I just made up his, his name. It was a name for the song first, and then it just became the, the group name. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So and and I like the way if it's if the, if it's songs, and uh, you play the songs maybe quite strict actually. In my band, it, it, it's it's a lot of arrangement and. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes more arrangement than I would like to, <laughs> <laughs> because I I like to to improvise. That's that's jazz for me to yeah. improvise and make it free. But for me to get the music out, I, I feel that uh, it's difficult for me to just write melody and a letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I would sometimes I would uh, next album I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, because I think it's because I play piano and I listen a lot to Debussy, Ravel all the mm. time, and I sometimes. Uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, transcribe? Not I yeah. don't write it down, but I check all, all the Here, time. Yeah. Though, yeah. And then so so that's quite hard work for Gregory also in the band because there's a lot of notes yeah. to learn. But he's that um, master that can play it and then put something else into it. Too. Yeah. So, so yeah. far it works very well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's you guys definitely created a sound. I mean, especially you. I think it's like after two thousand. I mean, I, I want to talk about with you about some of your earlier stuff as well. But especially after, I, I think before you, you kind of a more improvised in a sense that, like, especially the quartet with Liebman and Bobo. Yeah, and Johan. Yeah. I think it was more open in a sense of it was. It was more open. Yeah. 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 Uh, and he, it, it sounded uh, the more open that was, I think the better it was. But yeah. sometimes, even with that quartet, we had uh, songs with arrangement. And uh, I must say, sometimes those arrangements didn't appear. I mean, yeah. they didn't show up. Yeah. And uh, so I got frustrated. I started to play all the parts on my base at this uh, try to uh, yeah but uh, but today i think i would more have let it just let it go and, and imp improvise more even more to that but that yeah, was but, a great experience for me yeah but those records are i mean that life at visiones that's that's really that quartet at its peak kind of you know because po poems and yeah. the far north are there, but then life at Visiones, then it's just like this life. <laughs> you guys are playing. Yeah, yeah, that was a fantastic week uh, yeah. to be there. Yeah, it was an uh, experience. Yeah. But uh, speaking of this quartet, like, how did you, I mean, kind of, uh, how, how did you uh, put this group together? Because you guys started to work already in the mid 80s, right? Yeah. Yeah. 85. It, it was. Um, well, I can just to say for the people who listen, it was Dave Liebman, Jon Christensen on drums, and Bobo Stenson. Bobo Stenson. Yeah. yeah. I had uh, worked with Dave Liebman in Swedish big band, Tolvan big band. Oh. So uh, we had, I I think we'd made a record before that, yes, and then some some tours. So then I asked him if he could join for, a, and he said yes. And then suggested uh, Jung and Bobo. Oh, okay. And I had never played with Jung before. Oh, really? And, uh, okay. I, I don't remember. If, I think I played with uh, Bobo before, but I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes. Um, yes, I had played with uh, Bobo in Renarama, actually. Oh, yeah, was, exactly. Yeah. yeah, the group. Yeah, yeah. But so I knew him from that, but but not not you, no. And and this was like basically like your working band for those ten years almost, right? Like I mean, yeah, it was. We we didn't we met met maybe one or twice a year because it was difficult to yeah to get everybody together. And uh, actually, the first song we played with no, no rehearsal or anything. It was wow. the first song on uh, New Hands. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Th those players are, with, I mean, especially with Jon, how was it like for you to play with Jon? I mean, because, you know, he, I think he's on like at least 20 iconic ECM records and you can immediately recognize his cymbal sound and he's yes. such a creative drummer. Yes. How yeah. was it like for you to play with him as a bass player? As this it was, was, was like a dream, but also you had to be very concentrated. And it, it, I learned so much from you because uh, in the beginning when we played, I, I think I he he he, he learned to me. He taught me to mm -hmm. 
For example, when he did something, I didn't have you. Had, you don't have to follow. You don't have to do the same. Oh yeah. So he wanted me to do something completely different, and he continues. And I have, I learned so much from that uh, in the improvising. Yeah. To play with him, and uh, so you ha you have to have your own thing, and then make it work together with with him. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. It was one day quite. Uh, it was the first day we recorded also. We were going to play. There's another song on that album. Uh, scrap. It's, it's not Scrapple from the Apple, but it's, it's, it's called something with Apple. It's a Dave Liebman's song. Okay. Yeah. To check yeah. It out. yeah. Yeah. It's a long time ago. But anyway, I took the music sheet because it was quite a difficult theme. And I took the, to put it on the music stand for Jorn. And he told me, just told me, I only read Agatha Christie. <laughs> That's a good one. So he actually said he doesn't read music. But then when we recorded it, he nailed the song. So wow. I don't, don't know how we did it. Wow, incredible. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, he's, he was such a creative drummer. I mean, yeah, incredible. Fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, but I wanted to ask you about this because I noticed like in the 80s and 90s, you played with so many American musicians. And yeah. How, how did this story happen with you and New York, especially, or especially with American jazz? Like, when did this begin? Like through Dave Lieben or was there another part kind of? Uh, first to say, when, you, when I started to play jazz, it, it was... I listened a lot to Scandinavian musicians and, and also, of course, to American. Uh, and, um, and it was like a dream, I think, for all, uh, many of, of us here that to, to play with those people because you, have, you listen to them. And, and it was not only the Americans, but, but the heroes you, you yeah. had yeah. to be able to play with them was fantastic. Um, but I think it started with that some of them was here playing and then you met them and then it became more and more. And, and so I don't remember exactly if it was one point. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, I played with a drummer in, in Helsinki, Jukis Otila. Yeah, I know him, yeah. Yeah, great drummer and a piano yeah. player. And he had a project with uh, Mike Stern and, and Bob Berg. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, and then he called me to do that, so then that became, and then we went over to, I was in Los Angeles with the Joey Calderazzo once, and then he asked me to go over there to play, and then I met some people there. Oh, and like that. Okay. So that, yeah, it was, was a crossover. Yeah. And um, I mean, Jazz is universal, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we we had a, you had a language to, to it, it was very natural to work with people from all over the world. I think yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I learned so much from that, of course. Yeah, I can ima I mean, imagine, but uh, I mean, you you played with all these amazing guys. But uh, since I'm a guitar player, I have to ask you about two projects you did. So first of all, is this trio you did with John Abercrombie and Adam Nussbaum? Uh, those continuation in Origo and yeah yeah I love that stuff I mean I'm such a huge fan of John Abercrombie me too uh, he he was he's like John Paricelli in a way like this yes he, he, he was was so great to play with and I wanted to ask you about the trio how was that formed and uh... that was formed uh... Uh, because it, to, uh, in 91, me and Ulf Akenius, the guitar player, mm -hmm. we went over to New York to, d to do two records. One of mine and one of him. And then there was a producer, Nils Landoki, who was producer. Oh, yeah. The piano player, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that's how that started. And then uh, uh, three years after, I went over to do this trio and it was like a continuation of that. Oh, that was okay. with Adam Nassbaum and John Abercrombie. But On did the you first guys... album was Noskofil, yeah. 
Did you guys ever play concerts with that trio also? Or? Yeah, we did. Uh, okay. When we recorded Origo, yep. we, had a, we had a tour. Oh, wow. That, yeah. That, that was really nice. And, and we, I, uh, John had a quartet um, also. Feldman. The, uh, oh, with, with Mark Feldman, yeah. 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 So we did a tour in Finland as well with that. That was really nice. Yeah. Oh, with Mark Feldman on violin. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's just so good to, to hear that you did, uh, you know, with all those amazing players. Adam is also like. Uh, yeah. He seems fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You, you played with, I think, some of the. I, I, I wrote on the list of drummers you played with. I know. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. It's... And when I was younger, it was like a, a dream to play with uh, all my older heroes. But today it's different. Today I feel like now I'm playing with my friends. Yeah. So, and was, so at that time it was, they were like, uh, it was more unreachable when I played with those when I was younger. and 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 uh, now it, I like to play with the people that I know, and so we have the possibility to rehearse more. And yeah. Because at that time it was often we just met and then we played. So. Yeah, sure. So, so yeah. So. But it's the the session you mentioned, like this, uh, where you and Ulf went to New York. It's that's your album, Fresh Enough. Then that. Yeah. yeah. The, how was that like? I mean, because you have like Sco there, Sco, John Schofield, and. Uh, yeah. And that, Jack Dijonette, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah. how, how was, did that project happen? That was put together actually by, uh, from Nils Landoki. Nils, uh -huh. yeah, yeah okay. he, he put that together. Um, so it was actually Ulf Vakenius who asked me to do this. He said, you, We have to do this. And because uh, I, I wasn't really prepared for this, uh, and uh, but it was a great experience too. And it, we were there for, I think, two or three days in, and made two, two records there in the studio in New York. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, it was a great experience, of course, fantastic musicians. How was it like with Jack? I mean... It was great. I mean, we played so... Sh it was only two days of yeah. recording, so I think today I would have played different because ah. uh, you had too, too much respect. Uh, and uh, when when I listened to it today, I would would have interesting. Maybe, yeah, play play different, but it's it's great. As, I mean, his playing is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the, the, I wanted to ask Lars also about. Uh, I, I noticed that like on the Liberetta albums, you have Dominic Miller on guitar. Yeah. And, as a guest, like always, like on one or two, two songs, usually on one, I see. <laughs> but like, what's your story with Dominic also? Because uh, you seem to have, you seem to love British guitarists like John Parricelli, Dominic Miller. Like, uh, uh, where do you go with, with Dominic? I met Dominic in, in um, a festival, uh, Jazz Baltica. He oh. was there playing with his group. And then he had a, a project in Stockholm. He was going to make a recording. He was there with Sting and he was going to make a recording. One song. And then he called me to come and I I, I was there to record. I played uh, keyboard and cello and bass on that. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a song for, for Sting. It never came out. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, sure. And after that, um, we, he came twice, I think. Yeah, twice to my studio in Gothenburg. So we have played, so we I actually have quite much recorded with all, only him and me. Oh, so wow. that's why those songs have, have come out on on the albums. So the, we were there for two, three days and we, we even composed some things together. And, oh, beautiful. Yeah, he is fantastic. I played, uh, he was uh, with the uh, with my band. But that was before Liberetto on on one concert in Italy, mm -hmm. and I've been with him on uh, one concert in uh, Ljubljana. 
Really? In Ljubljana? Uh, symphony Orchestra. Really? Oh, wow. I don't remember that. Wow. Interesting. 2014, June. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ljubljana. Yes. Really? Wow. Interesting. Oh, so cool. Yeah. And, oh, he's uh, a fantastic guitar player. Yeah, yeah, and, and especially for, with your sound, like the way you write music is, yeah. again... Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. A match made in heaven, like, but... Uh, and uh, also speaking of, uh, I just want to go to, to your one of your last records. We mentioned Paula also already, yeah. and uh, Summer Wind, and I listened to it the other day on Sunday, I think in the evening we listened to this at mm -hmm. home. It was just like, I think we played it twice all over the entire thing because it's so... So beautiful, and uh, I also love what you did with autumn leaves. That you actually chose autumn leaves, which is like can be really cliche, but the way you played it, I was like, wow, it can be done is still in a really beautiful, nice way. And how how did you decide with how did you meet with Paula and decide for that duo? Because it's really such a nice project you guys did. I've played with Paulo before a couple of times. He he was a guest many years ago in a project in, in Gothenburg in, with the strings and concert there. And then I've kept contact with him and we had a quartet um, a couple of years ago. And then I was invited to his festival. Oh yeah. And he, he was also sitting in with Libretto in a concert in Italy. Oh ah, really? Italy. Yeah. Oh wow. So it, it felt natural uh, to ask him, and I love him as a player. Yeah. yeah. So, it, yeah. And it was very quick recording, actually. It was uh, Sigi Loch, who was the producer there. Yeah. So I think we were one and one day or one and a half day in the studio. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, and so it, it, I, I, it feels very fresh. I, I like it too. And I like the way to record that. Normally, when I do a record, it doesn't go on one day or two days. I need weeks or months. <laughs> very slow. But uh, at this time, it, it, we just record it. And it, it, then it, you get a freshness also. Yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. And yeah. it's so in, intimate yeah. because it's a duo. So, yeah. But you mentioned Ziggy Loch. I wanted to ask, ask you, like, how did, uh, when did you meet Ziggy? And uh, I, I think your music, in a way, <clears throat> changed like that, but uh, went in some other direction once you uh, became associated with act music. Would you say that or, or no? Or how did you, first of all? Yeah, uh, if it is so, it, it, uh, I don't know why, because I think it was the beginning of 2000 before Liberame, because yeah. speaking about my records, I... I To, I, don't, I don't think I had any producer of the Liber, except from uh, Cecilia Norby was producing two of the albums together with me. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I, I have very much freedom there, but maybe it has changed because when I started uh, with acting beginning of 2000, I also wanted to use my background as a classical musician mm -hmm. yeah. and as a pop musician I wrote songs before so I, I felt I wanted to get that out more to combine that with the mm -hmm. in, in the music so I think that was the reason and and um, and then act helped me so much to, to get the music out that was really important for me yeah yeah yeah, yeah this it's what we sp spoke yeah this the, again the li liberetto concept the songs kind of yeah this has re really helped you out. But uh, Lars, can we go just a little bit back? I mean, you mentioned like already now pop music and classical. And uh, I wanted to ask you really for the beginning, like speaking of jazz, let's say, or improvisation, uh, do you remember like the first jazz concert or album that like really blew your mind that you, that you, you asked yourself like you in a teena teenager, like, okay, what is this? Yeah, <clears throat> for, first I saw a TV concert on, on TV with uh, Nils Henning, Oster Pedersen and Oscar oh. Pedersen trio. Yeah. 
and I, I just it blew blew my mind. Then I, I, I realized I want to play jazz. But then one album that it was with Chikoria, Stan Getz, Stanley Clark, Tony Williams, is it? Oh shit, I don't know that one. Maybe. Live, live in Montreux. Really? Oh, wow, okay. Have to check it out. And uh, I heard this music and I didn't understand anything. <laughs> I could hear because they're playing La Fiesta. Yeah. So I, I could, it was just a lot of, but this is fantastic music. This, 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 I want to play this. <laughs> so so yeah. that's something, yeah. And then, the first albums, yeah. Then you started to explore like different bass players or? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. So I was actually 18 when I started to play bass. Wow, so really late. Before you play cello only or? Yeah, yeah, cello, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. And, and who were the guys like you started to explore like in the beginning, like of when you in started? In the beginning, it was uh, Palle Danielsson, Swedish player. Yeah, and okay. yeah so it was uh, um, all old players like uh, Gary Peacock, Charlie Hayden. Yeah, yeah. And then I started to listen to a lot, lot, lot of plays. So it's like the... The, the names that everybody knows about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you did. You went through the whole uh, school in a way. No, not, I mean, there's a lot of tradition. I didn't go through the, then. So yeah. I, I listened more to the contemporary. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And after that, so later I, I studied the, the older yeah. jazz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's quite cool. But, just speaking of the past, I also wanted, you mentioned Ulf, also Vakenius. Yeah. And uh, you also seem to have a really amazing, you have really good connections with guitar players, by the way. <laughs> I see. Uh, like... maybe, maybe it's because I wanted to be a guitar player. Oh, wow. Well. Yes, that's what I wanted to be. I, I mean, I, I played rock guitar when I was blues, when I was really? young. My heroes is Peter Green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Mike Bloomfield and that. So that's why, how I started. But the thing is, uh, I realized that I, I would not, uh, it wouldn't uh, work if I wanted to play music on high level. I have to choose another instrument. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So I, th I think that's why I, I choose the bass. It was not the, the love of the bass, but that's, <laughs> so I think yeah. that's why, why guitar, yeah. yeah. But uh, where, do you, where do you, you and Ulf go back? I mean, since Ulf is also from Sweden, right? He's, I think he's. Mm -hmm. Gothenburg also or no? Yeah. I mean, Ulf is the same age as me, but oh, okay. he seems uh, uh, not older today. But for me, he was much old because he was much earlier. When, when I started to play, he was a star. Oh, so, okay. So I was. Uh, it was really great for me to start to play with Ulf, uh, and, and because he, uh, not because he's just a um, fantastic player, but also his visions and, and uh, of music and so it was uh, a big honor for me then when I started to play with him and we have, yeah. we have a story back to the, it was since the 80s yes we started to play yeah 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 so you have you've done so many I listened the other day to, to the album you did with uh, the Keith Jarrett's music and, yes. Uh, yes it's so beautiful and the Beatles stuff and everything so it's, it's, oh. it's good to see all these influences you guys yeah. inco incorporated yeah, he's but, a fantastic player. Yeah, uh, I, I wanted to ask you since it's just one last thing, not to take too much of your time, which is like uh, no, 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 it's uh... <laughs> you know you've done so much stuff, so I have all these uh, uh, things I want to know. But you've done so much stuff as a band leader and also as a sideman. Uh, it's a tough question now, but like, not, it's like okay, what do you prefer? But like, how do you see being a band leader? compared to being a sideman? I think for me, it's, it's uh, a balance. When I, I do too much um, of my own and playing my own songs, I get very, then I, I really want to play in another project. 
then yeah. I think, oh, it's nice to be a sideman. Because it's, it's, it's a different yeah. thing. You are... I mean, you are m more responsible for so many things when you are a lead leader. Definitely. Um, I mean, musically, it's, it's the same because you want to make the, the music as good as possible. Yeah. And you're... I mean, as the bass player, the best thing you can do is to make others sound good. That, that's, that's what I want to do. If I can do something that makes the other one uh, can go to the limit, what they can play. Yeah, yeah. makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So that you do if you're a sideman or if you're a leader, it's, it's the same. So for me, it's the balance. Right now, I feel more like I want to do my own thing more and more. Yeah. Yeah, at the moment. Um, but that's uh, also the good thing with being a bass player or rhythm section. You have the opportunity more to to play with other people as a sideman. Yeah. For example, if you're a saxophone player or a singer, it's more difficult. Yeah. So that I, I feel when I talk to to like, like uh, Cecilia Norby, who I'm working a lot with, and I talk to her, I think she misses to go out and play a sideman job because she, she cannot do that. Because, yeah. So, uh, and sometimes if, if I do too much of that, I, I miss doing my own thing, but I'm, I'm blessed. I have the opportunity to do my own thing and I'm yeah. really happy with that, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the... Uh... Yeah, for being a bass player, that's easier. <laughs> a singer, yeah. Kind of being a background singer, maybe in a yes. pop band, that works. But yeah, uh, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah yes. makes sense. Cool. Great, Lars. Thanks so much for all these cool answers and everything. You think it's okay? Yeah? Oh, yeah, I love it. Doctor <laughs> <Yeah>. Jazz. <laughs> Dr. Jazz.